Excuse me. <clears throat> yes. Uh, logic lesson 48, part three. So we did part two yesterday, um, and we're going to continue that lesson today. So I'm using a new camera. I'm hoping this works out. Uh, just trying to get a little clearer picture. Um, anyway, logic lesson 48, part three. Contrariety and subcontrariety. Now you have this, you should have already written down lesson 48. You don't have to write this part down again. You already have lesson 48, contrariety and subcontrariety. So the last thing we wrote down in our notes for that particular lesson was that um, if one contrary proposition is false, it does not necessitate the truth or falsity of the other one. Okay, so that should be the last thing you wrote down in your logic notes. And you're going to continue under that um, with this same lesson. Got it? <clears throat> All right. Um, so let's see, a little bit of review. I just mentioned that the last thing we wrote was if one contrary proposition is false, it does not necessitate the truth or falsity of the other one, okay? So um, remember, uh, the relationship between A statements and E statements, contrariety. If one of them is false, the other one can also be false. If E is false, A can also be false, okay? So just because one is false doesn't necessarily mean the other is true. However, if one of them is true, then the other one has to be false, okay? If one of them is true, the other one has to be false. That means that they both can't be true, but they can both be false, okay? That's contrariety. So, <clears throat> they cannot be true at, who knows it, the same time, okay? However, they can be false at the same time. They can both be false, they can't both be true. So again, contrariety, it's the relationship between A and E statements. Um, just a little, a quick review on um, the different types of statements. What is an O statement? Who can tell me? What is an O statement? What is the form of it? Some S is not P, okay? Some S is not P. How about an A statement? What is the form of an A statement? Got it? All S is P, very good. How about an I statement? An I statement says that some S is P, and an E statement is? No S is P. Very good for those of you that were following along and got those. <clears throat> um, what are the five relationships of categorical propositions? Five relationships of categorical propositions. Contradiction, contrariety, subcontrariety, subimplication, and superimplication. Got it? Those are the five relationships. Now, we've already learned contradiction, okay? Contradiction uh, propositions. If one is false, the other is true. If one is true, the other is false. They can't both be true. They can't both be false, okay? That's the relationship between A and O statements and E and I statements, all right? That's contradiction. Contrariety, what we learned yesterday, again, I already went over this. They can both be, make sure I get this right, they can both be false, but they cannot both be true. Okay, that's contrariety, contrariety. Um, today we're gonna learn about sub-contrariety. Okay, so the one down here, way on the bottom, it's the opposite of contrariety, sub-contrariety. And it's the relationship between I statements and O statements. So I already put up some notes here to save us some time. So go ahead and, um, and uh, 
jot down these notes. So subcontrariety is the relationship between I and O propositions. So the relationship between an I and an O proposition, going this way, that's subcontrariety. Okay, so a reminder of these statements, their form. Um, an I statement says that some S is P. An O statement says some S is not P. Uh, so let me see here, what are uh, some examples? So an, an example of an I statement, some cats are four-legged creatures. An example of an O statement, some cats are not four-legged creatures. All right? I statements, O statements. Again, subcontrariety is the relationship between an I statement and an O statement, or vice versa. Now, subcontrariety propositions are the opposite of contrariety. They can both be true at the same time. Subcontrariety propositions can both be true at the same time. <clears throat> However, if they can both be true at the same time, but they're the opposite of contrariety, that means what? Anybody have this? They can both be true at the same time. However, if one is false, the other must be true. Okay? If one is false, the other must be true. They cannot both be false. Cannot both be false. Lastly, if one subcontrary, uh, sorry, if one subcontrary proposition is true, Necessitate <clears throat> the truth or falsity of the other. I'll read it to you. If one subcontrary proposition is true, it doesn't, oh, I missed the not, sorry. It does not necessitate the truth or falsity of the other. One more time. If one subcontrary proposition is true, it does not necessitate the truth or falsity of the other. Okay? So again, it's the opposite. The opposite of contrary is subcontrary. Uh, so let me give you some examples. Uh, some bears are carnivores. That's an I statement, right? That's an I statement. It's a true statement, right? Some bears are carnivores. Now, bears eat meat. If I give the O statement version of that, some bears are, are not carnivores. Okay, so let's say the first statement is true, that it is a true statement, some bears are carnivores. That's true. However, it does not necessitate the truth or falsity of the second statement. Some bears are not carnivores, could be either true or false. We don't know. Now we may know that, okay, just by doing research. But by looking at the first statement, we can't tell for sure what the second 
with the, the truth value of the second statement. How about this one? Some cardboard is food. Okay, that's a I statement. Some cardboard is food. I statement. Is that true or false? That's false, right? So if we give the O statement, O proposition version of that statement, some cardboard is not food, we know that that statement is going to be true. If one is false, the other has to be true. Okay? Um, <clears throat> am I saying that right? Yes. Okay. If one is false, the other has to be true. Uh, how about this one? Some circles are not round. Some circles are not round. Is that true or false? That's false. So if I give the, uh, the um, O version of that statement, some circles are round. No, I'm sorry, let me back up. Some circles are not round. That's an O statement, okay? That's a false O statement. So let's give the I statement of that, the I version of that statement. Some circles are round. Since the first one is false, we know the second one is going to be true. Last example. Uh, this is, once again, an O statement. Some food is not sweet. Some food is not sweet. That's an O statement. Okay, a universal, <clears throat> sorry, a particular negative. Particular negative. And it is a true statement, right? Some food is not sweet. That's true. So if we give the I version of that statement, some food is sweet, that could be either true or false. Now we know that it is true, but it could be either one if, if we don't actually know the information. Okay? So once again, they can both be true, they can both be true, but they cannot both be false. The exact opposite of contrariety, which is they can both be false, but they cannot both be true. Okay, I want you to open your books. Uh, for your homework today, uh, I want you to finish doing the, um, the questions on page 96, 97, 98, and 99. Uh, we should have already done several of these questions. Um, but yeah, I want you to I want you to go ahead and do those. I am going to go through some of them with you. Okay. So let's go to number two on page ninety six. <clears throat> some conifers are evergreens. Some conifers are not evergreens. So again, I'm on page 96, if you haven't got there yet. Um, number two. Some conifers are evergreens, some conifers are not evergreens. Okay, what kind of statement is some conifers are evergreens? It's a particular affirmative. That means it's an I statement, okay? Some conifers are not evergreens. What kind of proposition is that? It's a particular negative. That makes it an O statement. So that means that because we're working with the relationship between I and O, your first answer, letter A, is that these are subcontrary propositions. Okay? This, is, this one is subcontrary. Um, some conifers are evergreens. Is that a true statement? Yes, that is a true statement. Okay. Some conifers are not evergreens. Is that a true statement? Now here again, some of you may not know and you may need to do some research, but I'll just tell you that also is a true statement. Okay. There are some conifers that are evergreens, some conifers are not evergreens. So it's a subcontrary proposition. They're both true. Does that follow the rules? Yes, it does, because subcontrary propositions can both be true 
but they can both be false. <clears throat> How about number three? Some U.S. residents are U.S. citizens. Some U.S. residents are not U.S. citizens. So the first one is, some U.S. residents are U.S. citizens. What kind of proposition, what kind of statement is that? That, once again, is an I statement. Particular affirmative, right? <clears throat> the second one, some U.S. residents are not U.S. citizens. What kind of statement? That is an O statement. Okay? Particular negative. Um, so once again, you have what kind of proposition? You're dealing with I and O statements. So that means you have a subcontrary proposition once again. Okay, so if we look at the first statement, some U.S. citizens, uh, U.S. residents are citizens, is that true? Yes, absolutely. Some U.S. citizens are, US, excuse me, U.S. residents are U.S. citizens. Um, some U.S. residents are not U.S. citizens. Is that true? Once again, yes, that is true. Now, if we were aliens from a different planet, we wouldn't know that for sure, so we couldn't tell that just by looking at the first statement, because the first one is true, we wouldn't know if the second one is true or not. But because we do actually know that some people who live in the U.S. are not, are not necessarily U.S. citizens. Right, so they're both true. So once again, this follows the laws, the rules of subcontrariety, because both of them can be true. Um, let's jump to, oh, let's see. Let's jump to number seven. Let's do number seven together. <clears throat> Some blueberries are berries. Some blueberries are not berries. So, the first statement, some blueberries are berries, what kind of a statement is that? That is, once again, an I statement, right? Particular affirmative, some S is P. The second statement, some blueberries are not berries, once again, an O statement. So you're dealing with the relationship between I and O, okay? Um, so if you're dealing with the relationship between I and O, what kind of, what kind of, what is the relationship between these propositions? They are subcontrary. Once again, subcontrary. Um, so the first statement, some blueberries are berries, is that true? Yes, that's true. Some blueberries are not berries, is that true? No, that is false, okay? Um, but once again, that follows the rules. Um, because if, uh, let me make sure I'm thinking correctly here. Just because, just because it's true, doesn't mean it's going to be false. It can be, doesn't have to be. But it can be. So in this situation, we have true and false. We're still following the rules, okay? Because if one is false, the other must be true. They can't both be false. They can both be true, but they can't both be false, okay? Um, so if the one is true, then the other can be true or false. All right, so let's go to the next page um, and do numbers one and two under translate and describe. So the directions uh, under translate and describe says, please do the following. Translate the following propositions into categorical form and describe the relationship between them. Assuming the truth value of one of the claims, what will be the truth value of the other claim. 
All right, so number one, some logic students understand the square of opposition easily without any trouble at all. However, that is not the case for all logic students. So let's go ahead and translate this into categorical form. What do you think these, it's one long sentence, we need to change it into two separate statements and change them both into categorical form. So what, how would you do that? What would you say? So let's take the first part. Some logic students under, understand the square of opposition easily. How would you change that into categorical form? How about this? Some logic students are students who understand the square of opposition. <clears throat> Let me say it again. Some logic students are students who understand the square of opposition. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is, well, let me read the original version without, okay, without any trouble at all. We're just going to skip over that part. The second part says, however, that is not the case for all logic students. How would you change that to categorical form? Once again, we would start with some logic students, but then we would say, are not students who understand the square of opposition. So the second part is translated, some logic students are not students who understand the square of opposition. What relationship do these two statements have? Once again, we have an I statement and an O statement. So that means that these propositions are subcontrary. They could both be true, but if one is false, the other is going to be true. Okay? So these are subcontrary sub propositions. They could both be true, but if one is false, the other must be true. Are we getting this? Again, if you guys are having trouble with this, feel free to give me a call. Um, and I can, I can try to help you out. Uh, let's do number two yet, and then we'll be done. Number two, some humpback whales spawn in the North Pacific Ocean, while others spawn in the North Atlantic Ocean. So how would we change these two statements into categorical form? The first one, we would say some humpback whales spawn, excuse me, let me start over. Some humpback whales are whales that spawn in the North Pacific Ocean, okay? Some humpback whales are whales that spawn in the North Pacific Ocean. How would you do the second one? How would you change while others spawn in the North Atlantic Ocean? So since we're dealing with, the first is dealing with the North Pacific Ocean, we're gonna say it like this. For the second one, we're gonna say, some humpback whales are not whales that spawn in the North Pacific Ocean. Okay, we're gonna keep it at North Pacific because that's what we're dealing with. So the first one is some humpback whales are whales that spawn in the North Pacific Ocean. The second one is some humpback whales are whales that, sorry, some humpback whales are not whales that spawn in the North Pacific Ocean, okay? Once again, we have subcontrary propositions. We have an I statement and an O statement. And once again, they could both be true but if one is false, then the other is going to be true, okay? Now, number three, I want you to um, do that one on your own. I'm just gonna give you a hint. It's not subcontrary, okay? We already did two subcontrary ones. It's gonna be either contrary or it could be contradictory. And that's the same with your, your previous um, assignments as well under examples. They can either be contradictory subcontrary or contrary, okay? Um, so do number three. Uh, the next page, page 99, uh, you have to draw a square of opposition again, so you can just copy that out of your book. It's just to keep, keep it fresh in your mind. And on the bottom where it says explain, it says look at the quote at the beginning of this lesson and explain what is humorous about it and what contrary problem is involved. So back on page, uh, 89, the beginning of your lesson, lesson 5.4 in your book, 
Uh, the quote says, he hoped and prayed that there wasn't an afterlife. Then he realized there was a contradiction involved here and merely hoped that there wasn't an afterlife. So just take a look at that quote and explain what is, what, what's funny about that, why there was a con, uh, why, why there was a contrary idea in that quote, right? Okay. Again, hang in there, guys. Um, I'm going to give you extra time to do this because this is a little bit longer of a lesson. So I'm going to make it due um, Sunday evening at 11.59, midnight approximately. Um, I'm going to give you the rest of the week and the weekend to work on this lesson. Got it? All right.